Hello, Summer Camp Art students. I'm Ms. Morris, and today we will create a watercolor salt painting titled Rainbow Trout. Materials needed for this lesson are one sheet of blue cardstock. Now you can get this at Michael's. Um, I prefer blue because that's the color I want to work with, but if you prefer to use a different color, that's fine. Um, I prefer the cardstock because when you are applying your salt, it makes it uh, a little heavier and this can withhold and hold it really well. Um, but if you don't have cardstock at home, you can use construction paper as well. That's just fine. Okay, so we have our cardstock one sheet of cardstock, a watercolor palette, a small round brush. Now your watercolor uh, pal palette usually um, is really inexpensive. Um, it usually comes with a small round brush already with it, but if you don't have one, you can always use this brush. You will also need one white, color pencil. You will also need salt, Elmer's glue, and you will also need a cup of water. Okay. So again, you would need your cardstock or construction paper, palette, glue, your brush, color pencil, salt, and a cup of water. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to draw our fish. Okay, so we're going to start here in the middle of the page on the left hand side, and we're going to make like a dome shape. And you're going to stop just like there. Okay, we're going to come back here and we're going to create the fish's lips, his mouth. Come back out and back in. There we go. We're going to come back here and do and make the uh, fish's tail up, in, back out, and close that sheet. Okay. Now we're going to bump and jump. Come here. Curve your line in. Come back up here. Make it two dots about that space apart. You're going to slant towards your right. Come in. You're going to make three. That's one, two, and three. Then come back up. Closing this shape. Bump and jump. Now we're going to go to the top of the fish's head and we're going to make his fins. You're gonna go slant upwards, wavy line going slanting down towards the fish and stops there. Now we're gonna create lines in this fin. And we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna just extend those lines. We're gonna create two lines on the top tail and two lines at the bottom. Now we're gonna come here right where you started your fin at the top. And we're gonna make a circle for the fish's eye. You can put a dot in the middle if you like. Now we're gonna come back up here around the eye and we're going to make a curved shape going out and then back in like this. Good job. Now, right where you see this point in here, we're gonna create another scale. And another scale. And another scale. And so where you see the point here and here, 
we're going to create another scale here. Keep going, close that up there. Keep going. And I'm making them nice and wide on purpose because we will be tracing all of this with our Elmer's glue. So just keep going, it should follow a nice pattern Here we go. And I think we are done. Good job. So now we have our fish drawn. The next part we're going to do is we're going to take our Elmer's glue and we're going to trace over everything we've drawn. Now, I must give you this one tip. Once you start, do not lift your picture up. Why? because it will drip and spill and your lines will just run and you will sacrifice the actual picture of your trout. So once you get started, keep your, your picture flat to the surface. Also, you wanna make sure you have something underneath, something really hard and sturdy underneath your, um, your painting because you don't want it to drip and you don't want to get a mess all over your surfaces. So please make sure you have something really nice and sturdy underneath. And that way when you wanna move it, you can just pick this up instead of picking this up because you don't wanna fold it or bend it. It will cause the salt to crack as it's drying and it will start to fall apart, okay? So keep that in mind. So let's begin. Starting where I started the, draw where the drawing, just a little bit more. I'm just going to keep a nice steady squeeze. And you can judge your glue at home if you need to squeeze it a little harder. Just be sure you don't make a mess of it. If your lines are very thin in some areas, you can always kind of just go back over them like I'm doing. Again, be careful not to gush out too much glue. And just do the best you can. Right now, all we're doing is tracing, retracing our drawing. And if you get hand fatigue, that's fine. You can always stop and then keep going. There we go. Okay, and so with the fish's eye, I'm just gonna fill it all the way in. Just like that. Okay. And you're trying really hard not to get the glue in those uh, negative spaces. That's like in here and here, just like in the negative space, you're gonna try really hard. You don't wanna compromise your drawing. You want it to look like your fish. 
So be really careful as to just trace your lines nice and carefully. There we go. I'm just going back and thickening up some of the lines that I made. Almost done. Keep working at home. And let me finish the tail. There we go. There we go. Okay. Just going to take a little more here. Thicken that line up. Thicken this line up a little bit. Very good. And I think we're done. Okay, for the next part, we're going to take our salt and we're going to spread the salt all over, just like you would do with glitter. And you're gonna be really, really careful with doing that because you don't want salt everywhere. Whatever excess salt that you have, make sure, like I said, you have something underneath so you can just dust that off and then you can throw the excess salt in the garbage, throw it away. Okay, so now we're gonna go over it, taking my salt, just like I would do with glitter. I'm just gonna make sure the glue absorbs all the salt. Make sure you completely cover the salt. I mean the, I'm sorry, the uh, glue. Make sure you completely cover the glue. I think I'm pretty much covered here. Okay, now be really careful with this part. You're just gonna kind of like shake it and gently dust off the rest. Gently. Okay, now I'm going to discard of my salt now. So I'm gonna pause the tape and I'm gonna let you do the same thing and we'll be right back. Okay, let's resume. Okay, so now that we have dusted off all our excess salt, we are going to now begin to paint using our watercolor paint palette. So what we're gonna do is gonna take our round brush, a small round brush, we're gonna put it in water. And I'm going to start with pink. So on my pink powder, I'm gonna make sure I get all that pink soaked up into my brush. Rub it, rub it, rub it. And all I'm going to do is just touch. That's all I'm doing is touching 
the salt. And it just sucks up all that nice, beautiful, vivid color. And you're only gonna to touch the, the salt, not the paper. You don't wanna saturate the paper. You want it to stay as strong as it can. You know what happens to paper when it gets wet. It becomes really pliable and soggy and it's not gonna hold like you want it to. So now I'm gonna go into orange. And you can do this in any particular way that you like. You can paint, of course, however you like. If you just want to paint it all one color, that's up to you. But it looks really beautiful when you play with the colors and you add some color here and take some color away there and add a different color. So that's what I'm doing. So now I'm going to go into yellow. I love yellow. It's a beautiful color. Again, all I'm doing is touching the salt. I'm not moving it, I'm not shifting it, I'm not painting it. I'm just allowing the salt to just absorb the color. Now I wanna go into purple. Here we go. I'm painting the top fin purple. I think that's what I want to do. And if you feel like you've missing some color, just go back in and just touch it. There you go, very nice. Now I'm gonna put some blue in. Really pretty. Go back in my water again. And then back into the palette. Really pretty. This is really fun. So now I think I'm gonna go into green. I want to color the front end green, bottom part green. Just giving it like a multicolored look, really pretty. I'm gonna go back into pink and color the fish's lips pink. Again, at home, you can do it however you like. You can paint your fish however you like. Awesome. Okay. Now going to the tail. I want to paint the tail green. Just to kind of balance this look since the front of them, the face, the fish's head is green. So I'm gonna go here. I'm 
just touching. That's all I'm doing. I'm not moving it. I'm not painting it. I'm just touching it. That's it. And it just absorbs and does all the work for me. Going back into orange a little bit. Nice. Okay, so now coming back to the fish's eye, all I'm going to do is put my clean my brush off a little, go into a, the black just a little bit. I don't want to really saturate my brush, so I'm just really just working with the tip of my brush into my black here, and I'm just going to put a dot, touch, touch the center of the eye, and just keep touching it until I get it to the size that I want only working in the center I'm not doing this I'm just touching the center and allowing the salt to just absorb it there we go okay and there you have it your watercolor salt painting. Now, make sure you keep this very flat as it dries. Do not pick it up. Do not hold it straight up. You're going to hold it like a, pe a, a, like a pizza, I would say, and you're going to take the harder, the heavier surface that you placed it on, and you can move it that way and place it in a desirable place to dry. Again, don't lift it. You don't want the salt to fall apart because it will and it will fall off and you don't want that to happen. You have to allow this to completely dry before you can um, hang it up, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. I had fun. I hope you did too. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.